I want to make the best graphic settings video I can and I've actually spent countless hours researching and testing settings over the past five years not with that intent in mind. You see it's become my passion to create high effort cinematic videos and I'm always doing my best to raise the quality bar wherever I can. In doing so I get asked all the time why my videos look better than other people's own gameplay and how my game runs so smooth while looking like this. This video is going to break down a whole bunch of settings you're probably missing out on not just within Escape from Tarkov itself but also in Windows, in the game's launcher settings, and in your own graphics card settings. All of which can be tweaked to have a significant impact on the way Escape from Tarkov both looks and performs on your PC. As an obligatory disclaimer before we get into these settings, we need to remember that no two PCs are built equally, and of course the faster yours is, the better performance you'll get out of any game, but that's exactly why we're going to talk about specific settings on how you can get the most out of your own setup. If you're able to follow along on your PC with this video playing in another monitor or on a separate device such as your phone, great. If not, that's okay too, there's plenty of quick tips to remember, and this video will stay up as a resource to everyone along with timestamps in the description if you'd like to return to specific settings later. So before we even launch the game there's a crucial setting to make sure you have enabled in Windows. Locate your Escape from Tarkov EXE by finding your Battle State Games folder, then open the EFT folder. From here right click on your Escape from Tarkov.exe file, making sure not to open the one with BE in the title which stands for Battle Eye, and click Properties. From here go to your Compatibility tab and click Change High DPI Settings. Next check the box that says Override High DPI Scaling Behavior and make sure the drop down menu is set to Application then click OK and then apply on the previous menu. This setting will help eliminate any blurriness in game which comes from unoptimized DPI scaling. This should not only make your game look a little cleaner but will likely create a boost to performance as well. While we're still in Windows, let's double check our graphics card profile for this game. Now I'm on an NVIDIA graphics card and I'm going to show you guys what has worked super well for me. However, I realize some of you are on an AMD card. If you are, I suggest watching this brief section anyway to see if there are similar settings in your own graphics card application you can utilize. And if there's anyone who's had great success with similar changes and wants to leave a detailed comment on how AMD users can access these settings, please comment it below and I'll pin whichever seems to be the most helpful. Right click your desktop, open in Video control panel, then click Manage 3D Settings from the menu on the left. Go to the Program Settings tab and select Escape from Tarkov from the drop down menu. If you don't see EFT here, or if you don't see Escape from Tarkov showing up in the drop down, try launching the game and it should pop up. If it's still not there, click Add and manually select it from the programs list. Now we're going to go down the list real quick here and just go over a few settings I think are important to take a look at. Anseotropic filtering, we actually want this to be application controlled because we're going to have Escape from Tarkov manage this setting. As you can see, mine is set that way as a global setting, but just in case yours isn't, you can either select application controlled or just leave it as is if it's already global. Now for anti-aliasing FXAA, I have this off as well. Again, we're gonna have Escape from Tarkov manage the anti-aliasing, so I would turn this one off if it's on in your case. The gamma correction, we want this one on, which we'll talk about in a moment, and the anti-aliasing mode, again, we want this to be application controlled, so Tarkov will be the one who dictates how this part works. Scroll down a little and check your max frame rate is matched to your monitor. In my particular case, it's matched to my capture card for live streaming, but if you're just gaming and your monitor goes higher than 144, definitely set it to your monitor's maximum refresh rate because this setting is going to matter quite a lot once we get to the in-game settings. For power management mode, make sure this is set to prefer maximum performance. Again, if it's already set that way from your global settings, that's fine too. For texture filtering quality, we actually want to set this one to high quality here over high performance actually. This is because Tarkov is a massively CPU bound game and offloading some of the work from your processor onto your graphics card will not only make your game look better but very likely perform better too. We're going to check our FPS in an offline raid later so on the off chance your CPU is insanely better than your graphics card creating an unexpected bottleneck we can always change this setting back to high performance later but let's set this one to high quality for now. Just below it texture filtering trilinear optimization make sure this one's on. Threaded optimization we also want on if you have a processor with hyper threading and off if you don't. If you're not sure, you can leave this one on auto. Vertical sync needs to be on for sure as this will matter shortly when we mess with our in-game settings and will allow you to get to a higher frame rate cap in your raids. This is also why it's so important we double-checked our frame rate cap was set correctly in this application. 
Make sure you hit apply at the bottom right to save any new changes. I want to take a moment to shout out a big opportunity for all of you in the extraction shooter genre and let you know that Arena Breakout Infinite is launching into early access on August 13th. This game was one of the most watched on Twitch during its beta test period with over 1 million beta test signups and overwhelmingly positive feedback, making it one of the best extraction shooters to anticipate this year. Arena Breakout Infinite is free to play and will launch exclusively through their website website at arenabreakoutinfinite.com. You can pre-register now by heading to their site or by clicking my link down below and you'll also be able to preload the game on August 12th, which I highly recommend to get everything installed and ready for launch day on the 13th. This early access launch comes alongside some excellent quality of life improvements, including four new language supports and a brand new third playable map, the Armory, which adds a new level of intensity to gameplay with thrilling CQC scenarios with increased risks and rewards. This game is awesome for both hardcore shooter gamers like me and brand new players to the extraction shooter genre. It is super accessible with exceptional quality of life features integrated into a true loot, shoot, and extraction gameplay loop we already know and love. Click my link below or head to arenabreakoutinfinite.com to pre-register and get ready for the launch on August 13th and remember to preload your game on August 12th. Thank you Arena Breakout Infinite for sponsoring today's video. Next, we'll want to adjust our desktop color settings from the left menu in your NVIDIA control panel. And again, AMD users should have something similar for general color adjustments. Here, I suggest opening Tarkov in an offline raid and making small adjustments until your game looks the way you want it. But we're just looking at these four slider settings, brightness, contrast, gamma, and digital vibrance. These are my settings, all of which are up a bit from the default, but everyone's setup is a little different, so definitely take a moment to play around with these. It'll matter a lot when we talk about post effects later on, mostly because making small adjustments to your settings here rather than to your post effects in Tarkov will more or less eliminate the need to use post effects at all, saving you some in-game resources to help you get a boost to game performance. That said, we will still touch on post effects shortly, but for now, let's get some important launcher settings in place. While not specifically related to graphics settings, it's important to have Escape from Tarkov choosing the lowest ping servers available to you to have the best performance and least amount of desync in your raids. To do this, click Change Region, sort your server list by ping, and select whichever ones have the lowest ping. The more servers you select, the more likely you are to have full lobbies with other players, but there are a lot of other factors that come into how other people are in your raids too. If you leave this on automatic server selection down at the bottom, you'll generally see full raids a little more often, but this setting will often choose servers with higher ping, resulting in inconsistent performance between your raids. So I highly recommend selecting a handful of the lowest ping servers for much more consistent raids all around. Make sure to hit apply to save your settings when you're done. Now let's click the drop down arrow under your name at the top right corner of your launcher and select launcher settings. Make sure the two main drop down menus here are set to exit the launcher and exit the launcher completely. There's not much benefit fit to having your launcher open while you're actually playing the game and this will eliminate one small task from your PC while you're trying to survive your raids. If you're a Tarkov Arena player, all of these settings are chosen separately in that launcher, so make sure to look at those as well before doing any arena gaming. Let's move on to in-game settings, and if you would be so kind, please hit the like button if you haven't already. That's really all it takes to motivate me to make more helpful videos like this. Once you have your launcher and server selection optimized, click the play button to launch your game. From the main menu, click the cog wheel at the bottom right. Let's start with the game tab as there's some really important stuff we don't want to be overlooking here. If you have 8 gigabytes of RAM or less, I recommend turning the auto RAM cleaner on, otherwise leave it off. Turn the use physical cores setting on if you haven't tried this yet. For most PCs, this will improve the overall performance since Tarkov is a heavily CPU bound game as we mentioned earlier. Now you may notice I'm only at 59 field of view, which is relatively lower than a lot of folks prefer, and this is because 59 59 FOV is equivalent to 90 horizontal FOV. This essentially gives me more screen real estate to work with while in RAID while avoiding some pesky accuracy and frame drop issues which have been known to come up in different field of view settings. The downside however is while closer objects appear a bit larger to me on a low FOV setting, I'm losing a little bit of peripheral vision on my left and right. So if you like the more zoomed out look on higher FOV, it'll generally be fine to swap to your preference. Head bobbing should be down all the way in my opinion. Having this setting higher just makes your camera move around way too much while you're walking and running and will typically only serve to make your life harder in game. You could choose to preload your hideout if your PC has a lot of RAM, 
them, but this tends to only make the hideout load five to 10 seconds faster and may not be worth the resource cost. I leave this one off, but it's not going to affect your performance in raid either way. Next, let's look at the graphics settings tab, and this would be a great time to turn on the FPS counter in game as a very general way to measure any performance gain so far and for the rest of what we're about to do here. To access your in-game FPS counter, press the tilde key on your keyboard, typically found underneath the escape key to bring up your in-game console screen. Then type FPS, all lowercase, space, and then the number one, and press enter. Tap the tilde key again to exit the console. Now you can see an FPS counter at the top right of my screen. You can turn your FPS counter on anytime in the Escape from Tarkov or Arena clients the same way, whether you're in raid or not, and you can turn it off by opening the console again and typing FPS space zero and enter. So let's go over all these settings one by one. Your screen resolution should just be set to your native on your monitor. So mine's 2560 by 1440. A lot of you might be 1920 by 1080. Screen mode, you definitely wanna be in full screen for the best overall performance. Turning your vertical sync on will link your EFT refresh rate to that of your monitor, which is why it's so important for us to double check these settings in Windows and within your graphics settings card application earlier. Texture quality, we want on high again in an effort to offload more work from your processor onto your graphics card, which will not only make your game look way better, but also run smoother on most PCs. Shadows quality, we want on low. They will look a little worse, but you'll be able to spot PMCs way more easily, and shadows tax your PC pretty hard compared to most settings, so keeping them low will always give the best FPS. If you're on a super high-end machine, like with a 4090, your GPU can definitely tank the shadows with no issue, and you'll be able to get away with these settings on high if you like the looks. But again, you'll also be making it more difficult to spot other players, so for most of you, I recommend keeping this one low. Object LOD quality, the lowest setting, of course, will offer the best performance here, as this setting dictates how quickly items, scavs, and players render into your field of view. But for that reason, I recommend bumping this setting to at least 2.5 so you can see players a bit sooner at range. Overall visibility, again, the lowest setting is best for FPS, but I recommend bumping this to at least 1,000 to again give you a better chance of spotting PMCs at range. Anti-aliasing, FXAA is going to give the best performance, but it doesn't look the best. TAA high has yielded the best result for me in between both looks and performance. If your PC struggles with TAA high, however, you could try enabling NVIDIA DLSS if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card or FSR 2.2 if you're on an AMD graphics card. In the future, these options should function a lot better than they do now once Escape from Tarkov is more optimized, but currently TAA high seems to provide the best balance of looks to performance out of anything I've tested. For HBAO, max performance is my suggestion for best overall performance. However, if you're noticing some frame loss on a lower end PC, you're also fine to turn this one off. The ambient occlusion you get is a really nice looking effect, but it does have a bit of a resource cost attached to it. For SSR, I would recommend setting it as high as your PC can handle. I would try running this on low in an offline raid and looking for any body of water or even just a puddle on the ground. This setting dictates how reflections work in your game and makes them look incredible on the highest setting, but often at a bit of an FPS hit. To me, it's worth it, but if you're on a low end PC, you may want to keep your SSR low. Anisotropic filtering is an interesting one as almost every graphics recommendation I've ever seen has said to keep this one off, though I find having it on will nearly eliminate any strange flickering many of the wall textures in this game have and really polishes out distant objects, making this game look way better at a low frame cost. So I'd at least try this one out in an offline raid to see if you can feel the difference while also watching your FPS counter for any impact. Sharpness does not affect your FPS in any way, but I recommend keeping it all the way down or pretty low, mostly because just about any painkiller effect in the game adds quite a lot of sharpness while active. So this kind of counters that effect out and makes your game look a lot less washed out when you're on painkillers. Now we see a lobby and game FPS limit slider. If you have VSync checked at the top, these sliders will be grayed out for most of you because your game's refresh rate, i.e. frames per second, is now being dictated by your monitor settings like we set up earlier. If you look to the top right of my screen, you can see my menu here is capping out right around 144 FPS, just like we set up in the NVIDIA control panel earlier, even though we can see Escape from Tarkov's lobby limit would otherwise try to cap us at 60. The same logic is true for your raids, where you can break the in-game FPS cap now with the settings we've made so far. Granted, that's a much more arduous task for your PC compared to getting max frames here in the menu. That said, we're starting to see some of these settings really come together, and we'll test some of these out in raid in a moment. If you don't have vSync checked or didn't want to unlock your frames earlier, you'll still be able to slide these bars around and should definitely leave them maxed out. At the bottom, I highly recommend checking high quality color 
for a nice look to the game at a marginal resource cost. Grass shadows look fantastic too if your PC can handle it, so it's definitely worth checking it out in an offline raid on a grassy map like Woods. To see if you like the look of it, again, keeping your eye on the FPS counter at the top right of your screen as you make any adjustments. The rest of these settings should be kept off in my opinion as they seem to have a noticeable impact on performance while offering little in return in my testing. As an honorable mention, Z Blur gives you a nice depth of field effect on your PMC's weapon at a small hit to FPS. It looks cool, but generally we're always kind of keeping our eye on the middle of the screen and it's kind of hard to appreciate, so I turned this one off just to get a little bit of an FPS boost in Raid. Let's talk about post effects while also testing our FPS. To get the most out of these settings, I suggest heading into an offline raid without bots enabled so they don't bother us while we're messing with settings. I recommend finding a space like this where you can see both daylight and darkness simultaneously so we can get a good feel for our ability to see into dark corners versus not making things look too bright so we aren't washing out the lighter colors. Now I did happen to get a pretty washed out looking raid just because it's really bright and there's a ton of clouds clearing up from a rainstorm or something, but this is definitely a good enough place to test our settings. We absolutely want our FPS counter on like I showed you earlier by opening up the in-game console and pressing FPS space one and then enter. From here, open your post effects settings and click the visualize button for a live menu, which will let you play around with these settings while being able to see the effect on how your game looks while also keeping an eye on that FPS counter for any corresponding drawbacks to performance. You may have noticed earlier that I keep post effects completely off. This is a personal preference toward the cinematic style content I like to make, but it also gives me a little bit higher FPS without them since as you saw earlier, I like to make my color adjustments beforehand with my monitor. That said, there are some interesting color presets you can get inside post effects which open up different possibilities than what we changed in our Nvidia settings earlier. It's mostly up to personal preference here as far as looks to performance overall. However, I will point out that Clarity, Luma Sharpen, and Adaptive Sharpen seem to be the three that lower my FPS the most when testing. Definitely mess around with it though and see what you like the best. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about any of these sections, if you feel like I missed anything important, have anything to add, and particularly anything regarding AMD graphics settings as I'm happy to pin any comment along those lines which might help others. And if you want to see what I was really able to pull off with my own graphics settings, check out this video.